Guess who's back? Back again. Schleggy's back. Back again. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. After having not watched Raw for a couple of months. To make it this week. This Monday. That I decide I'm going to tune in. And not just tune in at the beginning. Or in the middle. Or at the end. But actually tune in at the beginning. And continue to watch through to the middle. And eventually to the end. Three hours of this madness. Who would do that to themselves? I deserve that. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. But he's like, get ready to watch. No, I even logged into the Twitter feed and started tweeting with all people talking about Shane McMahon's coming back. And you know, I'm thinking about it for WWE, who always undercuts themselves by announcing so many things, having very few surprises. But it was surprising I didn't see any direct acknowledgement to Shane McMahon, at least that I saw anyways. Um, so I'm like, okay, they're bringing Shane McMahon back. Well, you know, since they, A, choose not to make new stars, or in some cases just completely forgotten how to do it, or B, if a person ever gets over to a point where they even get close to being at that level of really, truly being a star, they'll do everything they can to put the screws to them and undercut them, especially if it's not one of their chosen ones. Uh, they have to go option C, which is to bring back the names from the past that every time you bring them back has a diminishing return, but that's all you got. And certainly, you know, Raw needs something. The viewership numbers every week continue to indicate that they need something because it's not good. It's a reason why people like me only tune in every couple of months. It's a reason why so many other people just stop watching entirely. Like, that's not okay. That's not good. And even if it takes a long time, eventually those chickens are going to come home to roost if you don't change this and you don't fix this and you don't fix this fast. But I didn't. <laughs> I'm thinking they're going to put Shane McMahon in a big angle or they're going to put him into a feud with somebody. <laughs> Not just randomly drop him into this crap. I'm sitting there an hour and a half into the show. I haven't heard a single acknowledgement of Shane McMahon. And then all of a sudden there's a cutaway to Shane. It's a freaking dumpy looking warehouse. Got a couple of guys bouncing around on a freaking mat. Welcome to Raw Underground. Raw Underground. We're going to take the stupid Brawl Brawl concept where we tried to get guys to actually fight each other for real, even though people still thought it was fake, and we ended up hurting a bunch of guys and creating a bunch of heat and bad feelings, and that was an unmitigated disaster, so now let's take that concept, tweak it slightly, and create our own version of the Dumb Dumb Fight Club. The first rule of Raw Underground is you don't talk about Raw Underground. <laughs> the train wreck. Does anybody else think that this was just something that Vince and Bruce Pritchard threw together at the last minute? Like, you can envision it now. Vince, Vince is in his, in his office. Bruce, of course, following close behind. Because when it comes to him, it's hard to know where Bruce Pritchard's nose ends and Vince McMahon's arse begins. Vince goes in to the bathroom, sits on the john, and as he's sitting there, he's thinking about, what are we going to do? we got to shake things up. Ah, there's a turtle head. What are we going to do? we got to turn these ratings around. The network's getting pissed at us. Bruce is like, oh, my God. Like, you're, you're awesome, Vince. Like, you'll figure it out. I promise you. Just concentrate on what you're doing. And think about it. You'll be good. And while you're at it, do something to help kind of like Conrad. Vince is sitting there, gets done with his deuce, grabs a big hulking amount of toilet paper because you know he wants no duties on his hands. Sits there, takes a wipe, and he says, I got it! Raw Underground! Same title on of my portals I used to have on Bayonax 36 years ago. And then they scramble in the last couple of hours before we're on a piece of this thing together. Because they have no clue what the hell they're doing. They call in Bugs Bunny. Kevin Dunn. What's up, Doc? Raw Underground. You know what this needs. Really, really be edgy. 
is mostly clothes ladies just dancing around. That'd be fantastic. I could get my carrots off to that. <laughs> Even Mormons would sit there and look at the girls and say, what the hell are they supposed to be doing? That's not edgy. That doesn't even offend us. You're wrestling ladies. Show more skin than that. Hey, you know better you think Vince Russo was involved, but at least Vince Russo would have enough sense that if you're going to go edgy and tasteless, go edgy and tasteless. Don't half-ass it. My freaking senior citizen, Bugs Bunny, Kevin Dunn. I get sharp with my character that. So, you take this concept. You just randomly drop it an hour and a half into the show with a Shane McMahon. Oh, there's a hell of Shane McMahon. Now i got to wait another half hour to figure out what the hell he's even doing. So that way we mostly have a bunch of people that we don't care about fighting. We know nothing about them, even the ones that we do. <laughs> do a Ziggler! Just doing some stupid looking work shoot fighting with camera cuts galore. Isn't edgy, doesn't make it feel grainy, makes it feel the typical type of overproduced, and every time you turn around, you got Bugs Bunny backstage sitting there, or behind the camera in the freaking production truck, cutting away to the girls, like, I know where this carrot's going tonight. <laughs> where the hell is wrong with this guy? One of the most recognizable names you have left. You want to attach to this disaster. And it's a disaster. And you guys know it's a disaster. You know it's going to be a disaster. And very likely prone to be thrown on the scrap heap of history and memories in a couple of months. Like I think I even went to a WWE's website today and didn't see a single mention of it on the entire front page. You would think... You didn't bother advertising it or promoting it beforehand. You would at least be talking about it, be all over it, like White on Rice or Pat Patterson on Ring Boys or something. And you didn't do any of that. And why the hell do I want to see a bunch of work shoot fights, which is pretty much what a lot of your damn wrestling matches are anymore, any damn way, for a bunch of guys that I don't know anything about? Like, if you're going to do this type of concept, like, let's at least just. Let's just make it basic, man. Just bring in some wrestling YouTubers, some people from wrestling media, and freaking wrestling Twitter, and, and just let them go to town. Just let them go to town. Like, imagine Deluxe Man in a gauntlet match, fighting other random YouTubers from the past, like Gold Standard and freaking Justin from Trio Woe Show or Jake from Trio Woe Show and so on and so forth. Just to sit there and have them just fucking go at it. Over who is Daniel Bryan's biggest fan and then Marcus Smart does the running like... That would have more intrinsic entertainment value. Imagine the hair pulling, the bitch slapping, and the girly screaming that would commence. I mean, that would be worth it. Winner gets freaking merch. Loser gets publicly shamed. Like, those stakes are real. They're real big. And I certainly as hell would rather see that type of crap. Like, Sean's view versus JD. Why would they fight? I don't even know if they have any beef or, beef or not. I'm assuming at some point in time they probably did. And even if they did, you probably could quickly manufacture it with those two idiots. And my God, could you imagine the magnificence of the awesomeness of it? Especially if you let them cut I'm stupid and insensitive psycho promos beforehand. Get me Sean's view and JD from New York on freaking Raw Underground over what I saw on Monday night. Give me wrestling Jesus versus better that. Oh my god. Winner gets bus money. Woo! A baby. That, that would be some cutting edge, edgy television. It's like. A new modern version of bum fights, but you don't have to feel bad about it. Because we're all wrestling fans. We already lack a certain level of self-respect anyway. So without difference in the make, but again, I'm just compact to the fact that 
You bring Shane McMahon back into this. You clearly had no plan for this. Like, the only thing that helps us go over was what you did with Hurt Business. Already a stupid team name as itself, but when you get to the end of the night and you got Lashley and you got MVP and you got Shelton Benjamin and they just basically laid waste to everybody in there, like, to me, if you did the Raw Underground just to get those guys over for one week, you know what I would say? It actually it worked because it did work. Those guys at the end came across really, really well. But is it just look at it? Like, who's going to benefit from this? Why in the hell would I want Shane McMahon, Mr. Minus Five, if you actually connect with the right hand in a work type of decent looking way? Because you know Shane McMahon throws two types of punches. It's either potatoes or air balls, and there ain't no in between. Oh, my God. <laughs> the way to get more people to watch your wrestling product that you refuse to call wrestling, you call it sports entertainment, is to do a better sports entertainment wrestling show. A way to not do that is try to do some crappy, lame-ass version of MMA that you don't have a feel for, that you don't know, that you don't understand. You don't understand those fans. You don't understand that product. You don't understand how to market and properly position that right for it, any of that stuff. All you're going to do is remind fans of, oh, this is why I don't care about WWE anymore. This is why I don't watch Raw anymore. I would rather watch UFC. Like, it was just bad. A bunch of people you had no clue who the hell they were. Doing a bunch of fights that you don't care what the hell are they even fighting for. Who gives a crap? Like, is there any purpose to it? No! The only thing that came out of this, the only thing that came out of this to me, was it was so bad and so full of train wreck elements on so many different levels that I want to watch next week. Because I want to see... This runaway freight train disaster running down the tracks. I can't wait to see what do to follow this up next week. Like, there I am sitting there thinking, oh, so are they doing two hours of Raw and then an hour of Raw Underground? Like, that actually might make sense. That might actually work. That might actually be a bit of a fresh air and it's something that could be helpful. And, oh, brother, they did it. Raw Underground. The first rule, you don't talk about Raw Underground. The second rule, in two months when we drop it like a bad habit, you'll never ever bring up Raw Underground again. 